uh, and we're still kind of putting things on and figuring out how we want to put it and everything or where we want to place it just because uh, we've never had one of these trucks before so it's 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 taking a little longer but it's okay because we're kind of trying to figure out where we want everything to be these are uh, this is and what is hey, uh, it's that Canadian all right so what this truck will go on is any kind of a collapse, uh, any kind of a trench rescue. Uh, it goes for high angle rescue, which is the rappelling or rock climbing, you know, all that kind of rappelling. Uh, it goes for low angle, which is something like uh, inside of a sewer, you know, in sewer pipes. So you have low oxygen, you got other kind of gases that'll be in there. So it's set up for all those things. Uh, and then it's set up for anything else that, you know, who knows. Because, you know, who do you call when you don't know who to call? It's always the fire department, so. I thought it was the Ghostbusters. Uh, uh, they're after us. Oh, okay. <laughs> we haven't had to use them yet. <laughs> uh, but what, what these are is, uh, those are our low-pressure airbags. Most of the airbags that we have are kind of like this. And this is what you'd use to lift any kind of a car, uh, parts of houses, anything else. Relatively small compared to our other airbags, which are right in here. So if you're lifting something like a semi that got rolled over onto a car or something that we need to lift, you go ahead and you put it in under that. Um, any kind of a machinery or something and, and some kind of a material processing, anything like that, we can use the airbags to try to lift some of the heavier equipment and everything else. Um, these bags right here are some of our airlines that are for, like I was telling you, uh, the lower level, if you're going into a sewer or something, we actually have masks so we don't have to carry the tanks with us. So we just put the, uh, the mask on and then we'll have an umbilical cord that we can tow behind us and get inside of it. Um, a lot of these, it's additional sauce <laughs> with, uh, if we have any kind of a big major, if you've seen how some of these uh, uh, apartment buildings and everything are kind of long roofs and anything. We just got additional sauce, because if you're trying to put a bunch of holes in a lot of places, you're going to need a lot more sauce, so it's extra equipment. And some of these saws are set up with the diamond blades. You can cut steel, you can cut concrete, you can cut wood, anything else that you got through this. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right. Uh, let's see, and then the, then the rest of it, these are what they call air shores, and what they do, they just hook up, they're really fast. These will go to the base plates. And you hook these on and you can hook them all together and then they just they shoot out. They'll shoot up so that they can hold up parts of buildings or whatever we need to hold up on. And they're they're all hooked up to the air bottles so they happen pretty quick. They they work kinda also in the same principle as what these are. You know, you just got the compressors that are, or the regulators that you just start pressing the buttons, it just goes really quick. Uh, what you do is these ones right here that plug into the bottom here and then you can nail these or whatever you need to do and then the tips are all going to be right up here all depending on what you're going to do. So you're going to expand it and then as soon as you get that, that distance you can plug it in and then it... Yeah. 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 It's like, oh! <laughs> house of cards, huh? Alright, and then these are some of the... the I'm sorry, the air umbil umbilicals, what we connect to if we got any kind of low uh, low angle or anything to hook up to our mask and everything. Uh, got the jackhammer. Uh, like I said, there's this is just for all the things that we may need. You don't know, but everything's just kind of on here. Um, let's see, those are some things there. Another thing that this truck has that they would be calling this for or we, or that they may need, this is an air compressor that generally we always have them at the stations. Well, if we're at a, in a prolonged time and we're going through bottles a lot, we can bring this truck out, we can fill the bottles right there as we're going. Also, there are situations where we can plug them right into here, and then our umbilicals can plug right into this, and then we don't even have to worry about going off the bottles. Or, and also, we have jackhammers and everything else that can run off of this. Smaller ones, it's not quite enough to push out of the big ones. So. Maybe next time, right? <laughs> and hand tools. We have all our hand tools here as well. So, um, like Lieutenant Leo was saying, this truck has just about anything we need on any given call. Any, any type of tool we need. So,
Okay, and like, like the ladder and most engines, this also has extrication equipment. This equipment's, uh, I, I think the, the spreaders are a little bit smaller than the ladders, but it's pretty good sized here, and then we got some pretty big cutters. And what this is for is just to back up any of the other systems. If we have something where we've got to have a lot, and you know we need a little bit more, a uh, perfect example would be like a multi-car pileup. You've got a lot of extrication you got to do. You can separate the vehicles, and, and this one can work with it also. And it's nice, too, because we can just pull these lines straight off. Where back in the day, you'd have to grab your, your generator and bring it to wherever the scene was, and then hook in here where it's nice. You just pull it now. It's already hooked up. It's ready to go. So, and you guys came from the ladder, did you? Yes. So you, those are, actually we all work together, so um, they may have explained, you know, ways of cutting into cars or cutting cars is a lot, lot different than, say, another shift or whatever. We love to use the cutters and spreaders, of course, but our Sawzall is, is our favorite tool. It's lighter, it's quicker, um, you know, for, for us to cut, in, cut a car, um, cut the roof, four doors off, takes no time. What do they we, mean by rolling the dash? Rolling the dash, you make your cuts down below. All you're doing is, usually it's when a uh, patient is trapped. And all you're doing is you're actually lifting the dash from, from the patient, pretty much. So. And depending on car, it depends on the car, on, on what there was, on how you would do it. Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of a 1980s thing. These newer cars, you don't have to roll the dash as much, believe it or not. It's just the way they design the cars now. The newer cars, they kind of disintegrate all around it. Um, you don't have to do as much rolling of the dash. And that's generally when their legs are all pinned and everything else. you got to be able to lift it up that way. Uh, these used to be real big on that, but uh, there's different ways that you learn how to use the tools. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. it, it you got to kind of let the situation dictate what you're going to do. You've got to take a look, and depending on where the person's at, too. Because a lot of times your best cut, they might have a leg or part of a body sitting kind of right in your way. <laughs> well, they're generally screaming in your ear at that point in time. I kind of like to stay away from them because they yell too much. When, they did the extra, when we did the extrication training, it was interesting to learn. It made me respect on how long it takes or what they need to go through the process. Right. Because I'm claustrophobic and it's like being stuck in there. It's difficult. Well, and you got all these noises. This is your car, and we're cutting it up worse than, you know, they haven't even gotten out yet. They don't know that their car's already trashed, you know, and then we're doing it. Yes, it does. And knowing what that was really would calm me down as a person. You bet. Well, and I'm fortunate because with our crew, I don't care what we need to do. We'll have everybody in that car out within five minutes, easily. Uh, sparks isn't that big of a deal, the, and, but the the saw itself, the reciprocating saw, it doesn't no. it doesn't cause any sparks. No. It goes right through it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And, and also, yeah, as you get through this class a little bit more, you know, you're gonna find out that you know every show, every car explodes. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and every fire, every sprinkler head, and the whole building goes off. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so a lot of it's kind of made up. Well, and you'll see too. I mean, just just to give you an example. Um, if you just want to hold on to this, and I mean, you compare this to like a sawzall, you know, I mean, this is, this, yeah, and I mean, if you want to grab it, see how heavy it is. They are cool. They are cool. I was amazed with that. Now, were you in our last class that you had, or did you do extrications? What's that? Oh, okay. No, I mean, did you do the last uh, academy though? Oh, okay. Does anyone want to grab a hold of this? this is because I think you guys are going to be able to cut up some cars, too. Okay. Do you think no, these I are going to be want to take it. not used as much of this? Well, you yeah. know what? These things, um, I think these will always be used. They may come out with stuff that's for the, oh, really? a little more... Well, that's great. And I, I say welcome. I mean, I think it's fantastic, as as, you know? Um, I mean, you can't beat this here as far as... You can use this for lifting, for... for I mean, it's, it's called a spreader, but a lot of times we'll actually compress it as well into doors to get purchase points and stuff like that. So um, the magnitude of the power that and this thing has. You were asking is, um, about rolling a dash. I mean, it's, it's pretty awesome. It is heavy, though.
Yeah. You know, so I don't know if you guys wanted to do this. I do not. Well, sure. It's usually a random spread. What's in your way now? Right? So it doesn't really help. So it has got some weight to it, huh? But um, it, it does a, it does the uh, job for sure. If you make the right cuts, <laughs> the right places, spreaders in there. Oh yeah, it's just run on take my rest of Oh no. Actually, it's it's run on. Um, it's hydraulic. It's hydraulic. Yeah, hydraulic. Okay. Yep. Uh, and you'd be surprised the the power pack that's up there. We'll we'll go up top. You'll be able to see it. It's in a unit that's just about maybe that big. But uh, that unit's hydraulic. But the power off of it is electric. So it runs just right off of our converter and the electric. So they just pop the electric on, and then we can get the hydraulic power from. Uh, we'll finish off this side, and then we'll show you what's up the top. <coughs> and this compartment here, is, it's a little boring, but, you know, <coughs> it's necessary. All it is is it, uh, we got the toolbox, just standard tools that you'd have around the house or whatever. Uh, we do have a lot of bottle jacks, um, and that's, once again, just for the lifting. Any kind of a uh, collapse type area. Uh, we got the sump pump, um, tarps, just miscellaneous, you know, on some of these things. Uh, and again, with any kind of the airbags that we use for, uh, for instance, like lifting cars or whatever, we, we use airbags to lift the cars and then we use the cribbing to put underneath. And then we can take the, the airbag out and it's stable. And before we even, which you took the auto extrication class, you'll know the first thing you want to do if you come on an auto accident where you're going to have to do some cutting is you have to stabilize. So cribbing the car before we start cutting it, just so the car's not moving around. Or the well, first thing we going to do is stabilize the car. So and, and also, if you don't stabilize it or put it at the right point, those spreaders, they'll spread to about right there so it can open up a lot of things. But they're so powerful, if you don't crib it from underneath and you put it in the wrong place, it's going to bend the bottom down. You just lost that much room. So you crib underneath it. It actually takes cars and just bends the heck out of them. So you got to, you got to kind of get it sturdy up underneath so you can get your full throw. Uh, this next next one here, we got our torches. Uh, that's basically for cutting any kind of steel, rebar, anything like that. Got chains. Chains. <laughs> we just found that out. They put it in a different box. We're yeah. like, what the heck is that? Uh, and we're going through that just because it's it's a new rig. Uh, guys are trying new things out, and trying to figure out what's going to fit where. Uh, did I mention that uh, the trailer kind of goes along with it? That's why it's right back there. If we have any kind of trench or anything, they just back up under the trailer, and then they can pull it all straight out. Uh, then this this uh, compartment here. You know, we're talking, Lee was talking about all the sawzalls. Well, we got a couple of extra sawzalls here. Uh, you got anything from all your rotary hammers, your drills, any other kind of a tool that we may possibly need is kind of all into here. Um, so does it sound like a giant toolbox? That's kind of what this is. Pretty much what is. it is, yes. <laughs> you got an empty space, too. Uh, actually, that space has to be there. Because on the other side, that's the air compressor. You've got to get the air that flows through. Otherwise, we would have filled it up. I'm thinking, yeah, every, every little spot that's open, it usually gets filled. Like, with, oh, yeah. So yeah. They find new tools to okay, and if you guys want to, we'll head up top and I'll show you what's, what's up there. Some of our, um, our harnesses. Each bag has a harness and helmets and um, some carabiners. And uh, we also have some of our ropes over there as well. Um, some of our life safety rope and... Um, the thing with our life safety rope is you can't use your life safety rope for, for, harness, or, uh, sorry, for hoisting. So you're not going to get hoisted stuff up onto a roof and then hang off it repelling. So the life safety rope is strictly for repelling only. And a lot of these are kind of set up for specialty items. Each one of these packs are kind of set up for something different. One of them might be the rest of somebody. Another one may be a pack that you take down, but you're looking out for somebody that you're going to put on the floor. You're trying to connect it to them and then finish lowering them down. So that's why some of these packs are kind of set up differently. It's kind of, it's a specialty type item. 
Now, is everybody trained in the high, in the uh, no. rescue? No. Uh, that's generally for the tech team. Now, we all have to repel. Mm -hmm. You know, we all got to be familiar with it. But the tech team will be the ones that, uh, if if someone's called out or they have a need mm -hmm. to bring somebody down, they generally call the, the tech team on that. Yeah. And then we have a light tower over here as well, and um, which can light up any scene that we that we need. Um, and this this. Can, this can light up just about any scene. Is it, I'm not sure exactly how high it goes up, but it's it gets up there pretty good. Then you can rotate. And then we also have two of our, our um, generators here. Now I was telling you about the the power plant for those uh, hydraulic tools. That's what you're looking at right up there. Those yellow units. So they're kind of small compared to you know what all they have to do. So. And then over here we have um, some of our backboards and um, a Stokes basket, which um, a Stokes basket, you'll see uh, a lot of them use them for, um, for pickoffs um, so, or, or uh, rock climbers as well. Um, normally as a crew what we like to do is we like to use just the backboards. Um, it's a little more, uh, it's a little more quick for us to, to get um, patients out of, a lot of times we'll use the ladder and what you have to do is you have to put them in a backboard then you got to put them into a Stokes basket then you got to hook them up in the Stokes basket and then take them up where we found if we just have them hooked into a backboard it's that much quicker for us so um, but then again, I mean, each shift is different. Everyone does their 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 kind of rescues a little different than, than what we would. Um, the same thing with the auto extrication. Yeah, the, the A shift may do may not use a sawzall like as much as we do, but um, forward better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, and that's just our preference. That's what we prefer to do, and and we we train all the time, so it's. A lot of us try. We'll, we'll try different ways to see which one is quicker. So, and we found the Stokes basket. It, it does have a purpose, but um, we've we've kind of found ways to work around it for speedier rescues. So, when the ladder goes up, when the ladder goes up and they're doing a high rescue, yeah. How do they get a patient down? Uh, a lot of times, yeah. What we'll do is we'll um, we'll put them into a backboard. I mean, depending on what what kind of injuries he, yeah. they have, but um, we'll put them right onto the tip, and we actually hook them into the to the rungs on the ladder, and we can actually swing that ladder and just bring them right to the ground. So, And it works the other way as well. It works for below grade also, which actually we have done rescues from, from the ladder from a below grade. So it saves a lot of like hoisting and so a lot of time. Yeah. And also it depends on the situation. Situations can dictate what we do. Uh, we also have some pieces that we can hook onto that tip. And if we wanted to, we can use that as a point. We can do a rope from there down to the basket. Uh, there's a lot of things. <laughs> and I think that's pretty much